Welcome to Location, the Logan News Program. I'm Patrick Gallagher. And I'm Melissa Menser, and here's your news now. And these are your top stories in the Loquitur. Cabrini's literary magazine, Woodcrest, has won the Gold Crown Award from the Columbia Press Association for its latest issue. Woodcrest contains students' creative work, including art, photography, and writing. The Gold Crown Award is the highest honor the association gives. For those looking to keep in shape, the Dixon Center offers different exercise classes. Classes offered include yoga, hatha yoga, yoga lattes, spin, zuma, as well as P90X. The classes are offered at various times throughout the week. For more information, visit cabrini.edu. Capboard accepted applications for new members and their goal for next year is to get more students in activities on campus. While directors plan events, general positions are available for anyone interested in helping out. To find out more information on how to get involved, stop by the SEAL office located in the Widener Center. The author of the book, Digital Jesus, The Making of a New Christian Fundamentalist Community on the Internet, Dr. Robert Glenn Howard, spoke to students and faculty in Cabrini's mansion. His research for the book started as he observed and interviewed creators of novice evangelical websites. He focused on how people use the Internet to communicate their religious beliefs. And those were your top stories in The Loquitur. For more information, pick a copy up around campus or visit theloquitur.com. Every year, Cabrini Student Government Association holds elections for new council members. Let's check in with Megan to hear from the newly elected about their plans for the upcoming school year. Every year, the SGA holds elections for new council members. This year, elections were held on March 28th and 29th. Candidate banners were all over campus prior to the elections. Let's hear from those elected for the 2011-2012 school year. My name is Gary Robinson. I'm the sophomore class president for the year 2011-2012. And um, I wanted to be re-elected because I really love making a change. And I also wanted to continue to give my students a voice. They liked what I did last year, so I decided to give them a second year. My plan for this year coming up is to um, hear their voice even more. My name is Callie Brown. I ran for vice president of the class of 2014. And I ran for vice president because I'm very involved in the Cabrini campus and the Cabrini lifestyle and just to get my face out there would actually hopefully make changes in the sophomore class. My name is Jenna Karocha and I'm the junior class president. I'm happy to say this is actually my third year on Student Government Association representing the class of 2013 as class president, so thank you all very much. There are more than 50 clubs and activities available for us to get involved. And as class president, kind of my personal goal is to have those numbers of involvement for the class of 2013 reach sky high. I'm really glad Jenna's our president because I know she's going to do an awesome job just like she did last year. I want our retention rate to stop dropping. I want students to stay here on the weekends. I want simple things. We can't change the world or reinvent the wheel overnight. But uh, little changes we're making now can definitely impact Cabrini and the, the future of our class as, as a whole. This is Megan Sokolowski reporting for Location. Back to you at the news desk. And here's your flashback back to history. In 1994, Rwanda armed forces killed 10 Belgian peacekeeping officers in a successful effort to discourage international intervention in the genocide that had begun only hours earlier. In about three months, the Hutu extremists who controlled Rwanda brutally murdered 500,000 to 1 million innocent civilian Tutsis and Mata Hutus in the worst ethnic genocide since World War II. On April 10, 1866, the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, the ASPCA, was founded in New York City by philanthropist and diplomat Henry Burr. Years earlier, President Abraham Lincoln had appointed Burr to a diplomatic post at the Russian court of Tsar Alexander II. In Russia, he was horrified to see workhorses beaten by their peasant drivers, and that became part of his motivation to start the ASPCA. And now is your week in history. And now let's check in with Felicia for your album of the week. Hey guys, it's Felicia here with the Your Album of the Week. 
Recently, Britney Spears released her latest album titled Femme Fatale. This album features her hit single, Hold It Against Me. This album also has quality auto-tune and upbeat dances. If you're interested in purchasing Femme Fatale, I will check it out on iTunes.com. I'm Felicia Melvin, that was your album of the week, back to the studio. And now let's take a trip around the world. Rebels in Libya were warned not to attack civilians by the NATO alliance members. The Obama administration is coming up with new ways to balance power while NATO takes over the airstrikes in Libya. Meanwhile, rebels have moved out of Benghazi into other areas in hope of seizing Tripoli. India won the World Cup in cricket on Saturday night. The winning shot was made by Indian captain M.S. Dhani in Benkid Stadium in Mumbai. The win over Sri Lanka has made it the second World Cup win for India since 1983. According to the New York Times, the Afghan Taliban has worried after a number of arrests, killings, and disputes took place in Pakistan. The arrests are being made by Pakistan security forces, but it's not clear as to who is behind the killings. And now is your trip around the world. And now let's check in with Holly for your weekly sports update. What do you have for us this week, Holly? The women's lacrosse team lost yesterday to rival Gwendon Mercy College 11-10. In the game, senior Jamie O'Hanlon led the Lady Cavs with a total of six points, 11 shot attempts, and three ground balls. O'Hanlon is now only four points away from her 200th career point. This loss for the Lady Cavs brings their record to 2-6 and six overall and 2-1 and one in the CSAC. The men's golf team claimed two wins this past week. Sophomore Greg Verdi, who won first place with an even par, led the Cavs to a team score of 308. Junior Chris Savardi also came in second place, shooting six over par, totaling a 76. The Cavs claimed the Immaculata University Invitational with a total score of 323. In men's lacrosse news, senior Paul Skolski claimed his 100th career goal this past weekend against Whittier College. This accomplishment makes him only the fifth player in program history to reach the milestone. The team will defend its four-game winning streak today against conference opponent Gwen and Mercy College. The game starts at 3.30. After getting off to a great start this past weekend against the Houston Astros, the Philadelphia Phillies fell short last night to the New York Mets in the first of the three-game series with a score of 7-1. The second game of the series is set for tonight at 7.05 at Citizens Bank Park. With all the hype from the Phillies' starting pitching staff, we wanted to see who is a fan favorite with Cabrini students. Let's take a look. My favorite pitcher for Phillies is uh, Roy Holiday because he threw a perfect game and a no-hitter, so I think he's the best one. My favorite Phillies pitcher is uh, Lidge because he threw the pitch to the World Series. My favorite Phillies pitcher is Cliff Lee because um, when he got traded a couple years ago after the World Series, I was really upset and now I'm really happy that he's back. My favorite pitcher is Paul Hamels because he won the World Series in 2008. My favorite Phillies pitcher is Roy Halladay. I saw him pitch his very first game down at spring training last year as a Phillies. That's why I committed to him. My favorite Phillies pitcher is Cliff Lee because he didn't go to the Yankees. That's all I have for you this week. Be sure to tune in next week for more sports coverage. Thanks, Holly. Well, Danielle's got a real nice treat for us this week. What do you have, Danielle? Hey guys, Danielle here with your entertainment news. As most of you know, I spent this past weekend in Los Angeles at the Kids' Choice Awards. The weather was great, the food was delicious, and the kids were obnoxious. Check it out. Well, everything is packed and ready to go. Okay, so I'm here with Danielle. We are about to board the plane to LA. We just had a lovely breakfast at McDonald's. I thought I ate a 600 calorie burrito that was like, this big. Found out though, it's only 300. And we are about to go to the plane no later than 7.20 a.m. because that is takeoff. Right now, as you can see, they're boarding for B. And right here, Danielle and I are safe. Yeah! This is Danielle's carry on. Well, after several hours in the air, we finally landed. And we've been here for about six hours, I think. And first we wanted to eat, of course, and then we went and got this delicious dessert. Well, there it is. We just 
saw a big time rush. We have no idea who they are. <laughs> Everyone was really excited about it. We thought it was the Jonas Brothers. I guess it was so two years ago. What are you most excited for? Um, actually, I'm not really excited for anything because I don't know what, what to expect. A, a big black Escalade rode by and everyone started screaming at it and someone rolled down the window and me and Danielle started running to it. It wasn't anybody. It was just like two 12 year olds pretending they were famous. Who do you know is going to be here that's famous? Um, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if they're going to be it but I found out that the Power Rangers will be here. Well, we don't really have VIP tickets but here's the orange carpet and here's our view from it. And we just saw big time rush. We have no idea who they are. This is where the celebrities will be picking up their tickets to get inside. Well, that is Snoop Dogg. We are inside, about to sit down, and here is the stage. The Black Eyed Peas and Willa Smith performed, and celebrities such as the Kardashians, Miley Cyrus, and Miranda Cosgrove made appearances. Overall, it was a great night filled with slime. The award show ended and we headed off to enjoy our last night in Los Angeles with drinks and dinner. We're getting ready to leave LA. It's a great while last night, but we're ready to go home. Well, the reunion special of Teen Mom 2 aired this past Tuesday. Here are some no noteworthy things I learned while watching. Kaylin's boyfriend owes the ugliest shoes I've ever seen. Barb and Janelle might as well be speaking two different languages. Jace only has one pair of pajamas. Chelsea's hair and skin color aren't anywhere near a normal human's, and Dr. Drew isn't satisfied until everyone is crying. Oh, and Joe and his mom are long-lost twins with the same eyebrows. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I'm off to burn off all the delicious food I ate this weekend. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Danielle, and now let's check in with Ian for Just a Thought. Hey, it's Ian with Just a Thought. For the past few weeks, I've kept my annoyance of Charlie Sheen inside. I figured you heard enough about him and I did not need to exacerbate the problem. I'm probably right. But I'm going to say it now. I don't care. I'm sick of hearing about his tour bombing. I'm sick of hearing about his nonsensical phrases he's created. And I'm sick and tired of hearing about his rapping with Snoop Dogg. Take a page from Joaquin Phoenix. If you're going to have a breakdown, at least go shoot a terrible movie for the duration and leave the rest of us alone. I'm all charlied out. I don't have tiger blood. I'm not winning. And I don't like warlocks. So just go away. Thanks. I'm Ian and that's just a thought. Thanks, Ian. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Be sure to check us out at thelocalroad.com and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Melissa Menser. And I'm Patrick Gallagher. Have a great weekend, Cabrini.